Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am trying to fix this OBD2 reader today. Um, it has an interesting case of uh, water damage and um, I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Uh, I have tried to open it before. I'll try to do it in front of uh, the camera now and uh, try to fix it and see if this will be a success. So trying to open this up in the usual way I applied a bit of heat up here and on the peripherals um, but um, it seemed like it could not hold its clips together so it can come apart like this now not even a lot of force is needed and as you can see there's a circuit board and let me just open this up these just slide right out of the enclosure and here you go let me put this to the side. If you can focus up here, uh, it seems like uh, it's a simple circuit board. Uh, here's an antenna. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll try to um, show you this in the microscope uh, for a better view. Uh, but um, let me just highlight the most important points that are in here. Okay, so when I looked uh, a bit closer into this, um, there are uh, there are a few major components here. First is this Atmel chip. This one is from uh, this one is a uh, Atmel eight uh, nine four, which is probably a microcontroller, which I'm not sure it is. I feel like this is some kind of a support um, chip. Uh, I couldn't find its data sheet anywhere. And then there is this uh, other chip. Uh, with with this black goo over it most probably this is doing all the heavy lifting and uh, most probably this is responsible for reading the canvas signals and uh, most i guess and i guess this is probably the hardest part of uh, designing an obd reader uh, is uh, deciphering the canvas messages and trying to request certain things so they have made sure that nobody else can read this and they have put all the black goo they could find over it and then of course uh, and this one is the main bluetooth ic uh, i searched it it's a very common ic it's um there there are also modules for it that you can buy um, and then these are the supporting circuitry there's a, a crystal with it of 24 megahertz and this one has its uh, this one has its own crystal interestingly they have put the crystal in here and put the whole of the um, a whole of the um, microcontroller inside as if they didn't need this anyway coming up here this is the back side of it and as you can see there are certain um, transistors in here that are controlling uh, the whole of the uh, most probably the pins I'm not really sure about the canvas protocol system I haven't looked into it that much uh, but most probably this is related to handling the uh, the the canvas decoding because i don't see any any other any other reason for it so this is a pcb antenna it's a very standard uh, antenna for the um, bluetooth uh, transmitting and receiving and as you can see this is then controlled by this chip it's feeding in here and then its data is coming from this chip which is being controlled from this chip as you can see all of these lines coming up to this so there are a few pins that we are interested in i will attach the diagram of um, this pin out uh, on the screen as you can see uh, it has this kind of uh, curved shape which is telling its uh, original orientation great see this is the uh, main voltage from the battery you have to apply 12 volts in here and then uh, these four and five pins are the signal ground and the chassis ground so we'll have to make sure that we attach this to ground and this to 12 volt and see if it works okay great seems like we have everything in the frame putting this into the voltage range and i hope you can see that um just going to check the voltage of my power supply as you cannot see it from here so checking this up Okay, 11.5 volts. I'm sure it would turn on with just 
1.5 volt of a drop so we'll just have to make sure that our uh, pins do not get mixed up because this will be the only part where we can mess this up huh okay so the voltage is going in there but but uh, there are no lights in here there's no activity and nothing is going on even if I try to just put it on the chassis ground nothing nothing okay nothing is going on okay turning off the power supply let's try to look into this a bit closer through the microscope and see if anything's burnt or any or any kind of um, traces are plucked off this okay here is the microscope view now here are a few things that are noteworthy first there is the voltage regulator the 78L05 is a pretty well-known regulator and uh, then there is this black blob which of course we cannot see through um, there's a diode probably protecting the short circuit and uh, we probably have to check the input on the voltage regulator but there's no point because there is no power being taken up and uh, here is the crystal uh, uh, for the uh, for the chip for the mystery chip and then coming up here looking ahead we see there is the here is the um, the bluetooth uh, the bluetooth handler which will handle all the communications and uh, feed the appropriate signals to the uh, to the antenna right here and then looking up ahead, here is the Atmel uh, chip, which takes care of the, probably it is just something in between a bridge, because I don't think this is the main controller. I feel like they wouldn't just put the controller up here and I cannot find any data sheet for it. So, okay, the pins, let's look at the pins if there is anything. Okay. Okay, there's one more thing that I'd like to note, that there is no water damage whatsoever. I cannot see any of it and I'm not sure if this is actually water damage so it's probably something a bit more easy though the color the, the coloration of this is a bit weird but I, I believe that's because of the shadows so if you put it like this the shadows are a bit weird though this is the resistor uh, anyway coming up here and I'm noticing that this um, the pin is a bit crooked. I feel like the problem might be here. Okay, great. I believe you can see it, but not perfectly. You can just barely make it out. Okay. You see the hole here? Probably this hole is making things a lot worse, but I'm not sure what it's for. It's a very weird place for a hole to be, to be honest. And the soldering job doesn't really seem that great. And then looking up ahead, the regulator seems fine, it's not blown. The diodes are good, the capacitors are good. Uh, okay. Nothing else is catching my eyes right now, so I'll probably check to see whether the uh, connection uh, from the 12 volt battery or the input uh, from the car is going into the regulator at least, because uh, that would narrow our search and see whether we are missing something. Okay, so that was the microscope view. Now we are going to try... Uh, I'll try and see if I can make this regulator uh, directed with the 12 volt so that we can skip the circuitry inside and then... Because at the end of the day, uh, the, the 12 volt is coming right into the regulator, first of all. So whether we uh, come through here or we go directly, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't make a difference. I'm hoping nothing else is wrong in here. So uh, in the hopes of that, uh, let's try to attach the 12 volt right in here and see what happens. First, let's try to find its ground and uh, VCC. Let's see whether this will actually work or not. I'll put this in the diode mode and uh, usually the 
the the regulators have the grounds right on the third uh, pin so as we know fourth pin is the ground and yep this is the ground and usually this is also in the middle bridged so okay the ground is found and um, let's try to find the input of the regulator nope it's not connected to any of this uh, let's try the other pin oh, okay this is connected right here that means this is going inside the chip but this could also be the input uh, capacitors or the filtering capacitors so let's try to find where it's connected to the uh, circuit board i'll try with this ic and see where this is connected because this would tell us whether this is the input or the output okay this is the input i guess and let's this is the input let's see where the output goes because it has to come to the chip 100 percent oh, here we go okay okay now i'll just put this to the side we don't need this let's just keep the whole frame to this and uh, okay so without doing any further research uh, and looking into it a bit more I guess we should try the first thing that comes to mind which is connecting it to the 12 volt directly and seeing that it might work or not so let's turn off the supply and the multimeter and turn on the supply let's see what happens let's first set the short circuit of the power supply to see that we do not by mistake fry our board so that's at 700 milliamperes this should be enough to to stop great okay for the ground it should be easy let's first check that uh, as we said the fourth pin from the above is the ground so two three fourth and let's connect it right in the middle uh, so that the ground is connected and we check the ground is actually common with the with the rest of the circuit so we're fine with that and um, let's just hope that this doesn't get gets connected to any other any other connection because that would be a problem because there are bus um, there are bus lines in here which should be at at the other voltages so we do not want to play with that as much as we can let's try to fix that in here and I'm going to use this uh, multimeter as a as a very fine probe so that I can check the voltage right in here just like an injection okay now I seem to have forgotten where the input is I guess this was the input let me just try it oh this is actually working the lights are on and you saw that blue light meaning that there is some kind of uh, transmission going on great it seems like it's ready this is good news okay so glad we don't we don't have to go uh, into it a bit further